Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Happy Friday. I uh, hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, this is the first time I've done a live stream, so you're going to have to bear with me here. I hope I hope this is working the way that it is supposed to. I wanted to do this live stream today uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, I'm actually out of town. I'm in New Orleans at the New Orleans Investment Conference, which was a great conference and uh, having a lot of fun here. Um, and as a but as a result, you know, I get back late tomorrow, got my son's volleyball game uh, tomorrow night. So I'm not going to be able to do the weekly uh, milkshakes markets and madness episode this week. So this will serve as that episode. I'll post it after this live stream uh, for Sunday as well. Uh, but the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the recent bond that China issued in Saudi Arabia. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> And the reason I want to talk about it is over, over the last 48 hours, I have gotten more emails and Twitter, uh, you know, the tags and DMs and phone calls about this whole China uh, dollar bond that they issued and how this is, you know, uh, once again, another game changer that, um, you know, the, the U.S. just didn't see coming. And now China's in control of the dollar market and it's another 3D chess move. And so. I, you know, I say that kind of jokingly, but it, it seems like whenever something like this comes up, anything that even result, remotely uh, resembles um, something along these lines, people gravitate to it and they believe everything they read that this is now some new found way for China to subvert the global financial system. And, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's another step towards removing American hegemony and, and the U.S. dollar and et cetera, et cetera. So what I thought I would do is just give a little bit of context for, for what actually happened, uh, why it happened this way, and then you know talk a little bit more about what it means and, and why it's not the game changer that that some people are um, uh, saying that it is. So, so first of all, uh, this is nothing new. This is a euro dollar bond issuance. Um, you know, you guys have heard me talk many, many times about the euro dollar market. And the euro dollar market is basically the demand for dollars and the dollars that circulate outside the United States. And the fact that the rest of the world owes a tremendous amount of money, trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in US dollars is part of the whole milkshake theory that I talk about all the time. There is so much demand for dollars outside the United States that the U.S. has been able to, quote unquote, get away with their profligate monetary policy and the, quote unquote, printing of money because there's just so much demand for it outside the United States. So the fact that somebody issued a bond in dollars outside the United States is not some new novel thing. There are they issued two billion dollars, I think, and it was oversubscribed. I don't know how many actually ended up being placed. Um, so it was a very successful bond offering, but there are literally tens of trillions of euro dollar bonds out there. So 200 billion out of, you know, trillions and trillions of sovereign uh, or, or, or euro dollar bonds in and of itself is, is not that big a deal. So, 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 so number one, it's not unique. Um, number two, let's talk about what it is and what it isn't. So, so, so first, the what what is you kind of interesting about it, and, and I'm the first to admit that it's that, that it's interesting is that they had it issued in Saudi Arabia. They didn't issue it in New York. They didn't issue it in Shanghai. They issued it in I think it was Riyadh, but it was in Saudi Arabia. And this is an effort on Saudi Arabia's part to make Saudi Arabia more of a financial hub in the Middle East. So if anything, it's more of a win for Saudi Arabia than it is for China. Um, so so that's number one. And, and 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 does it represent you know increasing ties between China and Saudi Arabia? Sure, I mean I I won't deny that you know countries trade amongst themselves and are always trying to develop more business amongst themselves. So I'm the first to admit that this is that that's what this is. But what it's not, what it's not is some huge you know newfound way to to, to manage uh, the dollar. Um, the other thing that I would say is this bond was not sold to the Saudi Arabians. I mean, there may have been a few Saudi Arabian institutions that bought it, but it wasn't sold from China to Saudi Arabia. It was sold in Saudi Arabia to a number of 
entities all throughout Asia, most of which are from China itself. Many, you know, Chinese banks and financial institutions uh, were big buyers of this Chinese bond. And the reason that Chinese firms buy Chinese sovereign bonds is for regulatory reasons, for capital reasons, but also they get a tax-free benefit, or not tax-free, but they get tax, there's a tax advantage for Chinese financial entities to buy Chinese sovereign bonds. So there's demand for it, right? The other thing is the reason they sold a dollar bond rather than a yuan bond is they need dollars. China, this is a way for China to get dollars. And, and the other thing is the, the institutions in Saudi Arabia that did participate, the reason they wanted dollars is because they don't want yuan. If, I mean, if they wanted yuan, China would have issued the bond in yuan, but Saudi Arabia doesn't want yuan. And what they do want is dollars. And why does Saudi Arabia want dollars? Because they have a dollarized economy. They're trying to match their liabilities with their assets. The Saudi real is pegged to the dollar. So again, you know, and the other thing, the other when you when when euro dollar participants issue dollar bonds rather than local currency bonds, they often get a better interest rate, and so that makes it attractive sometimes. The problem, though, here's the problem. The problem is all of these euro bonds, whether it was issued by China or some other country, they're issuing a bond in a currency that they cannot print. And that is great as long as the dollar goes down versus their local currency. But if the dollar doesn't go down versus their local currency, then regardless of getting that nice lower financing rate, the the, the, the capital value or the face value is going against them as their currency loses value versus the dollar. So they end up having to pay back more than they otherwise would have. Not only that, but this is the basis for basically every carry trade blow up in history. A carry trade is when you borrow in one currency that isn't yours because you either get a better rate or you know, uh, you can use then that currency that you're borrowing to go make some specific investment. And it all works great for a while. But then when that currency that you borrowed goes against you, um, <laughs> bad things happen, you know, and on, on the Macro Alchemist website, macroalchemist.com, if you're not already signed up, you should go sign up. Uh, you know, we did an entire report on China and the, the, the financing troubles that they're having. And we did an entire report on carry trades. And so you can, you can read the China report to understand why they're trying to get dollar financing. And you can read the carry trade report to understand why in the short term, getting dollars is great, but in the long term, it ends up blowing up. Th this is really the heart of the whole milkshake theory that I've been talking about for years is that the whole world owes dollars. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is that part of some of the some of the the things that were being sent to me uh, was that now China can control the flow of dollars and that they can bail out the global south if the global south ever needs dollars well sure in a bull market and in a in a market where credit is expanding that's absolutely the case but that's always been the case lots of crazy projects get funded in bull markets I mean, just go look outside, right? <laughs> I mean, we, we, we've got a bull market now and, you know, credit is, is, is flowing. The problem becomes when credit is no longer flowing. In other words, China can create dollars out of thin air by making a loan, but they have to risk their own balance sheet to do that. They are taking risk when they extend a dollar loan. And if that euro dollar market ever contracts and credit is no longer being extended, then their ability to create more dollars is gone. And if that credit contraction goes too fast and too far, then you get a crisis. And in a crisis, you need to recapitalize the system. But the only entity in the world that can recollateralize the system with dollar reserves, base money, is the United States. The Treasury can do it and the Fed can do it. Nobody else can create U.S. dollar base money. Can they extend U.S. dollar credit? Absolutely. But again, in a crisis, nobody's extending credit. In a crisis, everybody's 
trying to grab the few dollars that exist because there's a dollar shortage. That's what a credit crunch is, is a dollar shortage. Um, if, if you wanna understand these dynamics a little bit better on our YouTube channel, the Milkshakes Markets and Madness YouTube channel, there's an episode from, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, four weeks ago called uh, Monetary Musical Chairs. And it walks through why this is important. So again, can, can entities outside the United States create dollars by extending dollar credit? Absolutely they can. But in a credit crunch, when they're no longer extending dollars, then they can't. And that is the heart of the problem. And that is why the US is able to dictate monetary policy to the rest of the world by interest rates. And if you have any doubts about this, just go back to 2022 when the US was raising rates and look what happened to the rest of the world. China's uh, economic fall, uh, both the stock market and the real estate market started uh, falling precipitously. And we know what that's done over the last couple of years. Um, the Bank of England had to bail out the gilt market. Um, you know, the Bank of Japan had to bail out the yen market and the JGB market. ECB had to set up a facility to buy periphery bonds because their yields were spiking. And that was all because the US was raising rates and the dollar was getting stronger. So anyway, I, 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 that, I, I just kind of wanted to kind of give people an understanding of what actually happened, what's going on, why it happened the way it happened. And, and, and again, you know, it, it's not to say that it's not a, a good deal or it, it, I mean, it's kind of a thing where everybody won here, right? You know, Saudi Arabia wanted to get more issuance in Saudi Arabia. China wanted to get dollars. Uh, you know, Saudi Arabia wanted it to be in dollars because they're a dollarized economy. Uh, the Chinese banks that bought the bonds, um, they get the the tax benefit of it. <laughs> you know, the other thing I would say, you know, with with the main buyers of the of the of, of the issuance being, you know, a lot a lot of Chinese financial firms. You know, it wasn't too long ago, two or three months ago, where China, you know, cut rates and re relaxed reserve requirements which freed up space on the Chinese bank balance sheets. And so now that, and then a couple of months later, China goes and issues a bond. And now that these banks have this freed up cap space, they go and buy the Chinese bond. Now that's not exactly QE, but if it happened in the United States, many people on Twitter would say it was. So I, I, again, I just, it, it's not that these things aren't important. It's not that you shouldn't pay attention to them. It's not that you should ignore them, but you don't need to jump to, to, to these huge conclusions every time a headline like this hits. And just because somebody on Twitter writes a Twitter post that this is a game changer and the whole global order has been reshuffled, you know, think about how things actually work. Think about, you know, the, the monetary system, um, you know, and the design of it, how money is created and who can create it and under what circumstances. And the last thing I'll say is just reiterate, in a bull market, in a credit expansion, lots of things are possible. That's not the time to judge whether something is truly successful. The time to judge whether something is truly successful is when the chips are down and you got a credit contraction. And so, you know, I, I, I would caution people who believe that just because China sold a bond in Saudi Arabia, that now they can now globally control the flow of dollars and that the U.S. is no longer in control of their own currency to kind of step back and just to take to take take it take some stock in, in in what actually happened and 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 why it happened that way. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I wanted to to get this message out there. Um, hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, again, I'm not going to be able to do the show on Sunday, but I'll be back the following week. And in the meantime, um, maybe Bitcoin will hit a hundred thousand dollars. In the meantime, it's pretty close. I can't believe it hasn't hit it yet. It's been at like ninety nine thousand all day. So anyway, leave it at that. Uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. Bye-bye.